but I was in New York working on these low budget features and you would work like crazy for a movie uh, for no pay and then it would never get released. And I figured I've got to figure out who's making the movies that I like. And at the time, there were two producers in New York who seemed to be making the movies that I liked. Uh, one was Ted Hope and James Seamus, who were doing movies with Ang Lee, and the other was Christine Bashon, who um, at that point had just made Kids and was in the middle of making I Shot a New Warhol. And I literally showed up at both of their offices, just walked in, and the Good Machine office, which was Ted Hope and James Seamus' office, was already huge, and they had 30 people. But I knocked on the office of Christine's um, company and walked in and it was just one room and three people and piles of shit everywhere um, and movies going on and said, I want to make movies with you. Um, and she let me start production assisting, being a production assistant on our films. So that means you didn't know anything about filmmaking or producing before, but you just learned everything by just doing it. Yeah, and I think it was the, you know, it was, a, it was a different way of doing it than most people do in the States, but it actually was a great way because I learned everything about physical production, how to read a budget, how to put together a budget, how to break down a script. I also learned everything about raising money for those type of films, and I learned how to talk to filmmakers, which Christine um, really stressed, which is a producer's ability to speak the language of story and, and be able to communicate with a filmmaker. And, sort of knowing all three of those things, fundraising, financing, physical production, and how to speak to filmmakers um, are, I think, the three cornerstones of being a good producer. How did you, I mean, how exactly uh, should we figure, how did you uh, get involved on the, on the creative side? How much were you involved um, on the physical production? I mean, since we, since we um, just saw the trailer of Boys Don't Cry, maybe you can give us, tell us a little bit. Are most people that, here that di exactly. directors or producers or? They're both, and actors. And so actors. I mean, I think I can only speak as a, as a producer. The thing that Christine taught me was knowing when a filmmaker sounded like a filmmaker. Um, and at Killer, we, we were known for taking a lot of first timers who had no experience or just had a short. And there's this thing that you, you come to recognize in directors, which is, you know, A, this presence, but B, their ability to communicate, which is so important. And I remember th the way I became friends with Mark Forrester, actually, is that he'd just done a small film called Everything Put Together. There was only a couple hundred thousand dollars. And it was good, but... Oh, you met him back then? I yeah, I met him that. at Killer. And Christine and I had lunch with him, and he was so charismatic at lunch, but also spoke with such conviction and was such a good communicator. When we left the lunch, she said, he's going to do very well. He speaks like a filmmaker. And I remember her saying that. It's always been important to me when I meet with directors to think about, does this person sound like a director? Are they going to be able to communicate a vision to a crew? And I don't mean knowing what lens to use, but because I think that's unimportant, the actually. The aspects. technical stuff, I think anybody, I think actually there's an overimportance put on teaching some directors technical aspects of things, because you can surround a director with a good DP who's going to know if they say, I want it to look like this photograph, or I want it to have this effect, they'll tell them what lenses to use to get that. But it's more about being able to communicate clearly with people, and it's a really hard skill. Um, and that was one of the biggest things that I learned. Storytelling, the importance of storytelling, the importance of knowing who your audience is, and I think that's another place where a lot of filmmakers get in trouble is they'll come in with projects for which the amount of money they need to make it versus what the potential audience don't match up. And I think it's always so critical to know who your audience is and be able to articulate when you're selling the film to buyers that there's an audience that you can reach and that audience um, is big enough to support whatever money you need for the film. Um, and also knowing the importance of, of story. I think story is so critical. So do you have any questions for Mark? I wonder how you, I'm a producer and I'm in LA and I, I always try to think about of course, this is a script I like, I want to do this, and I believe in it, but also how did your taste develop, you know, like going from Boys Don't Cry to something like this, where, of course, it's also something yeah. that, like a financial interest in something like this, but still, like, how do you still stand behind something that is well, I, maybe not necessarily, you know yeah. what I mean? You think I sold out? 
No, no, no. Um. <laughs> Charming. Nice, actually. No, it is. It's nice. It's yeah. no, no, no. It's very nice. There's no rape. There's no rape in this yeah. movie. I, I wish like it, it, like sometimes I ask myself like what? How will my taste develop? Like, what? What is the right thing to do? I, not to do? I, don't, I feel like I really love movies. Like I grew up. I don't have a type of movie that I like. Like I love movies, and I see every movie that comes out. And because I was this misfit kid in Arkansas, like I would watch like a horror movie, and then I would watch a 70s conspiracy thriller, and then I would watch The Bad News Bear. I just love movies, and I still find that I can find something to like in almost every movie. There's only a couple movies that I really hate and think, like, this has no purpose in existing. There's always some aspect that you like about it. Yeah, I just feel like it's, you know, and you also know when you worked on movies, you know, I, there's this culture in L.A. where people really want things to fail on some level, too. They, wanna, they want things to be bad. I don't know why, because... You, you work so hard, like I see the people's effort in any movie and you think about how hard it was to make it and you know, it's easy to sit watching it later. Well, at the same time, of course, that's the only real, the audience who's not filmmakers doesn't look at the process, they just look at the movie, but I've always loved movies and I feel like I wanna make as many different kind of movies as I can. Certainly, you know, right now I'm focused on building a company, so I'm trying to do both, trying to, make films with artistic integrity and then also try to make films that have some sort of integrity but also make money and it's become harder but I think there is a you know even though I'm not going to say this is like Boys Don't Cry it's not going to win an Oscar there's a slightly subversive element in it that I like in this I didn't make um, an incredibly cheery uh, children's movie I made a children's movie about a kid who's the movies edgy. about him trying to yeah I'm not gonna pretend like it's yeah, no, I'm not it's gonna go not see like, it and think it's, it's too edgy right, but yeah it's, um, it's original um, but the biggest thing I think especially like as a as a if you're trying to make it I wouldn't even focus on um, I would just try to do the things you like and I think the zeitgeist will go like this and I mean there were people 10 years ago, 15 years ago, like people who loved horror movies couldn't get arrested. The studios weren't making horror movies anymore in California. If you loved horror movies, you were a horror director, you were unemployable, and now they're the most employable people and they just had to wait around. But I also feel like, for me, the thing I learned at Killer was just trying to identify talent and just getting involved with talented people, like, you know, trying to identify directors that you think are the, or writers that you think can you can ride their coattails by helping push them forward. Yes. Now you've mentioned that um, a really good script or a relationship to a writer is a very important thing and a good asset. Um, yesterday we had the chance to talk to the co-writer of uh, The Lost Highway, Barry Giffen, and I asked him, um, how do you deal with producers? And he said one sentence, and he said, sometimes I just have to Sometimes you just have to shoot them. So, how do you deal with writers and how do you take care of your I wouldn't, I don't think I'm going to be working with Barry Gifford. <laughs> I, I don't know, I feel like Milos Forman yesterday, I went, did people go see him speak yesterday? Everybody here. Yeah, so he said this thing about producers saying that like a good producer is the best asset. And, and I think that, you know, whether there's bad studio executives and good studio executives, there's bad financiers and good financiers, there's, I think that as a, as a writer, if I was a writer here or a director, I would be looking for a great producer to work with because it really is a great, a valuable relationship. And Christine Vachon, who I worked with, you know, had these long-term relationships where she's willed her director's projects into existence. And the trust that Milos Forman talked about that exists where you know that when the producer, he said this thing, when the producer comes to you and says there's no more money, that you know that he's done everything to do it, is, um, is, is a great trust. I think for writers sometimes it can be hard because producers have directors back, but producers are often the one firing writers or replacing them or you know, changing their material. Um, and it, I think it's more complicated, especially in Los Angeles, to be a writer because you're you know, often replaced and often seen as expendable. I try not to do that, but, you know, I fire writers like every producer has. Mark, is there any final word, any final advice for all the young, upcoming producers, directors, actors? I just think, well, there's a, you know, like I said, the, the, the big thing is, I think, to go with your gut, and hopefully you have a good gut, and try to stay on that, even though, 
you know, you may not be, whatever. I mean, I always use the analogy when I went to college, um, you know, the, well, this is embarrassing. I have this German tattoo. Does anybody know what this is? It's the Aisha Zane Neubotten tattoo. It was this German um, um, band in the 80s, this avant-garde band where they sawed through their instruments and, you know, they did all these art rock performances. And they were really huge in America. Um, and when I got to college, like all that sort of, you know, European music was considered to be, people would make fun of my tattoo. They would make fun of the tattoo because, um, you know, they'd say, oh, you like that weird German band, you know, you must like synthesizer music and blah, blah, blah. And it was when pavement was really popular. And, um, and then I was at Coachella in like 2004 and I was in a Del Taco and the kid from the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs, which is this big American group who was like, you know, 23, came up to me and saw me and he was like, ah. Oh, Neubotten, I love your tattoo. And I thought, oh, I'm back. Like, I just had to wait long enough for like people to start liking the music I liked again. But I feel like that's the thing is you just gotta love, like whether you love horror, or whether you love whatever, you just gotta focus on the type of films you love. Or if you're like me and you love all types of movies, be strategic about it. But I also think if you're a producer, which is the main advice I can give, you know, tr latch yourself onto talent because you'll never lose by betting on talent. And if you're a director, try to hook up with a, um, uh, a really good producer because they'll protect you and push for you. And I don't know what to say to actors except that I think actors have the hardest road of anybody. I think it's the hardest thing to be an actor out of anything um, because I think it's just constant rejection and I couldn't do it. Brad, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Great having you here.